Hi everyone, Kevin here. We're back with video number two. This is module three, topic five. We're talking about crushing and pressing, and let's get going. We left off with optical sorting of grapes. This is a cool new technology that actually uses a, a, a digital camera to pick out grapes and sort the good ones from the bad ones. And the way it works is you have a tray or some kind of a table. And so if you look at the instrument here on the left in this picture, the tray I'm drawing the arrow on right now. So grapes, after they're destemmed, they will run across this little conveyor belt and they'll drop off the edge of the conveyor belt. As they fall through the air into a bin, there are video cameras down in the lower part of the instrument. They're looking at the grapes. They're looking out this way as I'm drawing the arrow now. So they're able to take pictures of the grapes as the grapes fall through space. And a picture, uh, one of those pictures would be like the one shown on the upper right here. So you see the grapes in the lower right falling down off of this conveyor belt through space and the digital camera would take a picture, a picture like you see in the upper right. What happens is the picture after it's taken is analyzed by the computer inside the optical sorter. And you can program the sorter to get rid of material other than grapes or MOG. We talked about that last time. So material other than grapes would include little remainders of stems or little jacks, we call them, little, little, little pieces like I'm circling here that are the remainders of stems or little unknown bits of stuff that come in from the vineyard. All this stuff is unwanted. You can program the machine to recognize those. And then what happens is because the grapes are falling off the conveyor belt and through space at a known rate of speed, the computer knows exactly where these items are in space. And there are little air jets that blow these, the unwanted stuff away from the grapes. So we, in other words, we take a picture, we see something unwanted like a little stem. The computer knows how far that stem has fallen since the picture was taken and a little air jet, a puff of air will blow at a certain point to blow that, to blow that unwanted material out of the um, stream of berries. The berries, the good ones, will end up in a bin down here below the below the, um, the below the optical sorter, and all the waste material will go off into a pile. Waste will go off into a pile here and be separated. So it's a really cool way of sorting grapes. Here are three videos. So the first one is at a very high-end winery, and these will be linked on Canvas, so please check them out. The first one's a high-end winery. This is Opus One Winery in Napa Valley. The wines are from $100 up to several hundred dollars a bottle. And so they can afford all the best equipment, including optical sorters. You'll see when they pick grapes and bring them into the winery, they do so in small lug bins, so the grapes are not broken. They're not in big half ton or larger bins where the grapes get crushed at the bottom of the bin. They're brought in in little lug boxes. So they're it's like delivering uh, grapes to the grocery store. You don't want to break them open. So Opus One can afford all these neat tools and spend extra money because the wine is so valuable the, and the bottle's price is so high. The alternative to optical sorting would be to either do no sorting or you can do some sorting just using people's eyes and that's what's shown in this second video here this is at Kathy Corazon's winery in Napa Valley and you'll see people actually doing sorting and then another look at an optical sorter if you'd like is the last one on the list and you can check that out if you'd like but that's optional when the grapes come out of the optical sorter they look like this I mean, are these beautiful or what? This is, looks like blueberries you'd buy in the store. There's, there's no material other than grapes. There are no small berries. There are no raisins because you can program the optical sorter to get rid of any grapes that are, have turned to raisins, basically, that are shriveled up. 
If you had underripe fruit, you can program the optical sorter to get rid of that. And so you end up with this pristine fruit that looks beautiful. Some people think it takes out some of the character because you lose any of that other stuff that used to historically come in from the vineyard. But in most people's book, it makes a really, really nice wine to use optical sorters. Here's a look at optically sorted fruit on the um, left here in the picture. In the middle would be unsorted fruit and then on the right would be material other than grapes that would be the waste product that came out of the sorter. So you can see sometimes you do waste some fruit. There's some decent berries in there probably, but a lot of the berries in here are gonna be things that they didn't want because they were shriveled up or something. It's not a very high resolution picture here, so it's a little hard to tell. Let's move on to presses. So this is a big press at a commercial winery. This big cylinder, is the press and you can see two of two presses in this picture the way presses work is they're a, they're typically a cylinder like this there are different styles but most of what we use in commercial winemaking at a large scale is a cylinder like this and inside the cylinder is an inflatable bladder that you can you can blow up with air so inside you can't see it but the lower at the lower inside of this cylinder would be an inflatable bladder. You fill the grape, fill the cylinder with grapes or with must, and then you close the doors. So the doors would close on each side, and you see all the perforations in the cylinder, all these little holes you see on both sides. You can see some on the back side of the cylinder here looking through the inside. All those perforations are through which the, great, the juice or the wine will be forced by the inflation of that bladder inside the cylinder. So there are a couple of videos here that you can check out to see the process, but let me tell you in the, a little bit more about it in the next couple of slides. Here's how it works. The doors open on the left here. You load the must or the, you could have, you might be loading a white must, which would be juice and skins and seeds. You could be loading red wine with the remainders of the juice and the seeds because the red grapes would have been fermented and turned into wine before pressing. But either way, you fill the cylinder, you close the door, and then you inflate the airbag as is shown in the middle here. And that pushes the grapes against the opposite side of the cylinder and there are those perforated perforations in the cylinder and the wine or the juice drains out and is collected in a big bin, which would be at the bottom of the press. When you're all done, you deflate the bag, you rotate the cylinder around, you open the door and the pumice, the dry pumice, which is the grape skins left over, these could be red grape skins left over from pressing wine or white grape skins left over from pressing juice. Either, either way, they're dumped out of the press the press usually gets inflated to one to two bars or one to two atmospheres. So we are under normally one atmosphere of pressure at sea level uh, on a normal day. So we would inflate to a couple of times the uh, air pressure we are under uh, to, to press the, 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 the grapes um, in this, inside that cylinder. One to two bars is pretty gentle. You want it to be gentle because again, you don't want to extract harsh compounds from skins or from seeds. The harder you push, the more extraction you get from the skins. And the, uh, the, the wine that results or the juice that results from high press pressure often is separated from the juice or wine you get from low press pressure. And then you evaluate the quality of the high pressure juice or wine to see if you want it in, to include it in your finished wine or not. You might sell it in the bulk market because it's not good quality because you pressed under higher pressure. So as the wine chemist, you can evaluate the results of that pressing at different pressures. You can evaluate the phenolic compounds that are in the wine, the tannins, the color. Um, you can look at the pH and the TA because it'll differ, it, it, it'll change as press pressure is increased. So you can look at all those things as a wine chemist. We 
of course, press whites before fermentation, reds after, or sometimes during, right before, often right before fermentation is complete. There's no hard and fast rule, rule that says you have to finish fermentation. The yeast will survive the pressing and they'll continue the fermentation even if the skins have been pressed away from the ferment, fermenting wine. Rosés, that light pale colored wine, usually it's kind of a salmon color, a light red, pink. Those get a few hours to 24 hours of skin contact and that's it. That's, a, that's plenty of extraction from the skins. We made rosé last week and we crushed the grapes, put them, um, actually we didn't crush the grapes. We put whole clusters right in the press, come to think of it. And again, as you increase the press, press pressure, it breaks open the, the, the berries. And the little, the little skin contact we got as the juice drained away from the skins was enough to pick up plenty of color. So we have a nice pink or salmon color in our rosé. We firm, pump that slightly colored juice off to a tank and we, we ferment our rosé. So rosés just get a little bit of skin contact. Finally, here's a nice video about commercial presses. Please watch this. Again, this will be linked in Canvas. It's a nice, nicely produced video about the process. All right, so what did we do in this module? We looked at these five questions the latter one being what are crush and press that we looked at in two videos. So go back and have a review. Please review your notes within 24 hours of taking them. It makes such a difference when it comes to exam time. Write down your questions, compare and contrast. Send me questions, email, come to office hours, but uh, spend some time studying this material. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.